Hello, we are going to show you how to inspect the internal components of a McNaught pulse meter with a digital register. This is applicable from the half inch or the 012 model to the 4 inch or the 100 model. Tools required to carry out these tasks will be an Allen key set, a small flathead screwdriver and long nose pliers if required. We'll start by removing the electronic register. There is two parts to this flow meter. One of them is the digital register or the display and the other part is the actual flow meter itself. So we'll start by taking the digital register off and this will expose the internal parts of the flow of the pulse meter and we can have a look at them as well. So we start by removing these four Allen screws and that will allow us to get into the internals of the register. So we remove the face now. It may be stuck by the seal that's on here. Sometimes they stick on the surface here and are a bit hard to get off. We can remove this plug from the back of the register and that allows me to put that on the bench and take that off. Next I need to undo the four cap head screws that hold the back shell on the, for the register and this will remove it and expose the top of the flow meter. So we undo those four screws, we feed that cable through the hole and then we put that on the bench. Inside you can see this has now exposed the top of the flow meter and we have what's called the pulse board. In this application this is a dual reed pulse board and we can tell by these two sets of black wires coming out. They're the little reed sensors that sit in the top of the flow meter. So what we'll do is we undo the two screws that hold this pulse board onto the flow meter and this will allow us to remove that pulse board out of the flow meter. Now if I turn it over you can see the little reed switches here in the little uh, aluminium standoffs. So this board is a dual reed because it has two sets of little wires. I'll put that out on the bench and out the way. Our next step to do is to inspect if there's any fluid inside this pulse board chamber and as you can see it's nice and clean so everything's okay with that. We'll then undo the eight cap head bolts around the top of the flow meter and this will allow us to get into the internal parts. We can then inspect the rotors uh, and the shafts and the internal part of the flow meter body and make sure that everything's okay there. So we'll just undo these. We just put those bolts out the way and stand them up so they don't roll away. Now you may find that they're a bit tight uh, and you might need to put a spanner or something to undo them because they're, they're a lot tighter than what these ones will be. As you can see, sometimes they get quite tight and it just takes a bit of effort to get them loose. Okay, once you have all the bolts out of the meter body, then it's a matter out of the meter cap, it's then a matter of just gently prising the meter cap off the meter body. And this is done gently by just 
working your way around and then just lifting that meter cap off. Okay, as you can see that's the top of the meter cap with the seal and the two pin uh, rotor shaft supports. We'll put that on the bench and out the way. As you can see there's the two dowel pins that locate the meter cap in one position and it exposes our two rotors. You'll see these rotors are at 90 degrees to each other and as you turn them you can see that they turn quite freely. What we need to do is remove the rotors out and taking note of the shaft that they fit on. So I'll put them back on the meter cap so that I know and then we just do a general inspection of the meter body and make sure that there's no internal damage, there's no chunks out of it or nothing's happened to it and this one all looks fine. We then get the rotors and put them back on the shafts and just check for lineal movement and make sure that there's no movement. Now they should be able to turn very very free and as you can see if I flick them round they turn very free. I'll put try the other one and it's better to try them singularly because you get better feel out of what's happening. Now I'm checking movement that way there's nothing there that one turns nice and free. So what I can do is I can then put the two rotors back together in that 90 degree position. Now as you can see I can't turn that because I have them out of position and they must be at exactly 90 degrees to each other. So what I need to do is just lift them up and you should be able to, I've got that out again when they're in the right position, which that's not, you'll find that they will turn around and they'll follow each other. So you should be able to turn one rotor and the other one follow and they turn very, very freely. Now, when you look at these rotors for them to go back in, you'll see that they have the screws up underneath and this is where the magnets sit up underneath here which read on the pulse board so that has to go with the screws down so that the top of the rotors are flush like that. As you can see, I'm struggling trying to get these rotors back in position. But it's very, very important that they are in exactly the right position. And it's just a matter of moving them across one tooth. And as you can see, when I get them in the right position, they turn quite freely. That I know that it's right. Okay, when we assemble this meter, we go back in the opposite direction. So it'll be a matter of putting the meter cap back down, and it'll only go in one position because of the two dowel pins. Push it down so it sits down, and you'll see that it all sits down nice and flush. We then put the eight bolts back in. And these get tightened down, finger tight, and then we tighten them in a, a cross pattern um, so that we get it down nice and flat. So I'm just going around just nipping them up so that they're all down evenly.
and this will allow me to tighten it down nice and true. Now, we tighten these up firmly in a cross pattern by going across ways. Now, when they're all down nice and tight, then what we'll do is we'll replace the pulse board. And as I said, this is a, a dual reed because it's got two little sets of wires. We drop that down and it'll only fit in one position. And we tighten up the two little screws that hold that pulse board into position. Then what we need to do is we check the seal underneath the register back shell and it's a little seal that sits in there. We thread the plug and the cable through the back shell and then we position it over the flow meter body and then we just loosely do the four bolts up. until we get all four down and then we can nip them up in a, a cross manner as well. What you need to do is make sure that the cable entries here are running parallel with your pipe work just so that the alignment of your front cover. Now what we need to do is then take hold of this plug with the screws in the top of it and then that plugs into that plug there. We gently push that in, it'll only fit in one way and then what we can do is just position the front cover onto the back shell and then we just gently do the four little screws until they're all halfway in and then we can tighten that down. Then what we can do is by removing this little orange plug we can then rotate the rotors by finger and we can see that the flow meter is registering. So that's, I know that everything's working, I've put it all back together, the rotors turn quite freely and also I'm registering on the flow meter. That is how we disassemble, inspect and reassemble a McNaught electronic pulse meter.